What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I want to break down what's going on with Spy and a couple of other tickers, break down how the technicals are looking thus far, and what you should be watching for as time goes on. I'm also going to talk about next week since we have some big stuff coming out that's going to be very important. We're going to be watching to see how the market does. But before I break anything down, this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you put in $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and this offer ends very soon. Anyways, now let's break down what's going on with the market. So when it comes to SPY this far, you guys can see that we had a very interesting day. We had this, this very, very nice pump in the morning as we saw SPY retest. Uh, it basically went be, uh, be between the 20 and the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame, just in between those levels before coming back down. And the thing about that is I gave you guys a warning today. I told you and I asked the question, is the move going to last? Because the last time we saw SPY approach these levels, we got this big rejection. So I told you to watch for that, to be very careful. And I told you what's going to matter the most is going to be where it closes. So it pushed, got rejected here, came back down. Got a very, very nice rejection, but then at the very end of the day, they pumped it back up towards 468, and that happens to be where Max Payne was. So they basically pumped it back up to uh, 468. That's very important. And by doing so, we ended up getting like a very decent close. It was kind of, it was just decent. It wasn't like that strong. It wasn't that weak. Uh, we ended up reaching Max Payne. That's where we closed that with a very balanced options chain. So this is, in my opinion what we were kind of like looking out for yesterday. I was telling you that the option chain is very balanced with the same amount of puts and calls expiring, a 1.00 puts to call ratio. How funny is that? And that's how the market ended up just closing. So with that being said, I mean, going into next week, we're still in a very, very critical place. The market is still in between greed and extreme greed. We're becoming less greedy than before. We're starting to see a shift in many indicators for market momentum, less in favor of greed. And then we're also seeing the puts and call positioning trying to go up again. So it's still going up, which suggests that the market had some downwards pressure. Uh, going into next week, we have some major catalysts coming out. I just want to mention them briefly. We have consumer inflationary expectations on Monday. For Tuesday, there's not really much coming out. Also for Wednesday, I think it's the same thing. Uh, we have some Fed speakers and just a lot of like mortgage data coming out for Wednesday. But Thursday is going to be massive because we have CPI coming out and we're expecting an increase in CPI. And we're expecting uh, core CPI to decrease just a little bit. So a little switch is kind of starting to happen right now. Will CPI be a little bit hot? Be a little bit careful, guys. This could still have a big effect on the markets. Uh, but with that being said, what do I see for SPY? Right now, guys, SPY is consolidating. It's very, very sideways, going back and forth and back and forth. We touched our demand area at this 465 area, bounced off of it, held nicely. We have resistance around 470. We rejected two times off of it. So we're basically stuck within these bounds. Now, it's trying to break out of the downtrend it was in for the last couple of months. You guys can see this right. Not months, sorry, the last couple of days. Uh, but here's the thing about it. We're just kind of stuck right now. We're kind of stuck. We're, we're barely closing near 468. So we'll be watching this going into next week. If we can try to hold above it or not. But I believe what's going to happen is we're going to continue to consolidate for an extended period of time. And then whichever way we break, it may take a few days to get that break before we see a much bigger move. On top of that, as far as SPY goes, we had a weekly looking bearish candlestick, but we held above the weekly five EMA. So that's a sign that we're still holding some support. We haven't officially turned extremely bearish. Remember, I told you I want to see this thing basically get a big drop below that 468 area. We're, we're just we're basically at 468 right now. We're at 467.9, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so we're going to be watching that very carefully going into next week. As far as Tesla goes, Tesla's looking kind of weak right now, but it also has a very important range I want to call out. We have resistance between. 240 and 242. As you can see in the last few days, Tesla hit that resistance and rejected. This is like the resistance zone up here between 240 and 242. And then for support, we're seeing Tesla getting bought up around 234 to 236. We're seeing the buyers just stepping in. So we have this support zone down here. We have resistance up here. And we've been stuck in this range for almost three straight days, almost three days besides the time we broke down into it. So Tesla's trading sideways, not really doing a whole lot. We'll just have to wait and see which way we break. Now, the critical support for Tesla, and this is going to determine which direction we go in. If we could try to break above 242, we could turn a bit bullish. If we end up failing to do so and we end up breaking below 234, 
return bearish because we have to try to close above 234 consistently. We did touch 234 exactly what I predicted yesterday. I said that we would touch that level and try to bounce. I used the words uh, that we would likely like kiss that level and kind of like bounce off of it. Uh, and that's kind of like what happened, right? So we're at this 200 area, uh, the 200 EMA, I mean, and it, it held it so far. So if you want to be really bearish, you want to see this thing break, it hasn't done so yet. So we're going to be watching that going into next week. Does Tesla get that break or not? As far as the QQQ goes, it's very simple. QQQ is still holding up decently. It's very stuck as well. So we have this channel that's very important. We had this channel between the white and red trend lines. And we also had the green trend line as a resistance. And we've been stuck very stationary going back and forth and back and forth. So with that being said, we have support right now around this 393 zone. The reason I'm calling that out is because when you look at the QQQ on the daily time frame, uh, not the daily, I think it's either the four hour or the weekly. Let me just double check that for you. I think it's the four hour. Uh, yeah, so on the four hour time frame, we have 393 as a support zone at the 200 EMA. This is holding up. For resistance, we have 400. We've been stuck going back and forth and back and forth. So if you look at what this thing was doing like two days ago, right? We were just consolidating around 400. Then what happened yesterday was we consolidated, we rejected off 400, came down to 396, bounced back up to 400, or just under that, and then came back down. Today, we saw this thing drop in the pre-market, push back up to 400 and come back down. It is stuck right now. It's just stuck going back and forth and back and forth, just like Apple. Very, very boring stuff. If we break and hold above 400, watch for a push to 402. If we lose 395, watch for a drop towards 393. As of right now, we're just stuck within the range going back and forth and back and forth. We'll see how this goes for now. With the consolidation period continuing, there is one stock that's outperforming. That is NVIDIA. NVIDIA got a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure. It's now starting to consolidate around this 492 area. If you break out, watch 495 followed by 498 to 500 as resistance. For support, watch 490 and then 488. If we lose this, watch this trend line right over here. It's going to be very important. Followed by uh, the next level below that's going to be 485. So we're going to be watching this very carefully. Uh, we have a nice potential looking accumulation structure that's developed on it. I'm going to be looking for another push up. It does look like you could try to attempt to push up higher to 495. And video is looking kind of decent right now. Uh, it's holding the support as well. So it, there might be an attempt for it to go a little higher, try to retest this trend line. And we'll see if NVIDIA could hold or not. But overall, it's outperforming the market, showing some strength. Finally, for Apple, this is going to be the last one I go over for today because I want to make this video quick for a Friday. Just like the QQQ and SPY, it's very boring <laughs> again because look at the range. We've been stuck in the same range for about, well, basically, let me actually go back a few days. So Apple had a range yesterday between 185 and 184.25, back and forth and back and forth all day. That was two days ago. Now, look, not two days ago, uh, three days ago. Sorry, guys. And then for the last two days, the same thing. It's been in, in a different range, but it's basically the same kind of price action. Apple has been stuck with support at 180 to 181 and resistance around 183 to 182.5-ish. It's been stuck, okay? It's been stuck between resistance and support, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you want to be bullish, we need to see it break. So far, it hasn't really done that. Hasn't, it also hasn't lost 180. If it loses 180, our next target is going to be 178. It's stuck right now. So we'll just have to wait and see which way it breaks. But otherwise, you know, for the really short term, we're just in a consolidation phase. The market is requiring us to be a little patient. And as the days go on, whether we enter a push or not, the most big, uh, I'm sorry, the biggest factor is going to be CPI on Thursday. So I'll be watching that as well. But anyways, that's it for this video. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys out there. Please have a great day. And I hope for the best for everyone out there. So th thank you for listening. Have a very happy Friday, guys. Enjoy what life has to offer. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you and peace out.